It is an everyday thing that we have to make a choice to surrender our will so that we can fulfill His will. That put the fear of the Lord in me because it made me realize that if it wasn't for my obedience, these, these men wouldn't have heard about Jesus before going to the front lines of war. Anytime I have the honor to be able to connect with some people like this, I feel so privileged. Today, we're going to be talking about radical obedience, and this is going to be an amazing discussion time. And I want to first introduce some people here that's with me. This is Steve, and Steve is a friend, team member of ours. And Steve, you've been at every trip almost in the last year with us at Compassion Action with our large gospel truck and it is great to have you on. And then we have Maddie here with us as well. And uh, Maddie, it's so good to be able to have you here. And then Ransom, it's so good to have you here as well. And uh, we've got both of you guys back. And uh, today we're going to be talking about radical obedience. And I want to just read a, a passage uh, found in um, Proverbs. Proverbs chapter uh, 29, verse 25 and it says this, the fear of man brings a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. And, you know, I, I shared earlier in the um, teaching time about Samuel and how Samuel anointed Saul and how Saul had, had some, um, he had some stuff going on in his heart that prevented him from really obeying the Lord. And we were talking ahead of time about even Jesus. Remember how Jesus surrendered his own will to the Father when he was in the garden and he surrendered his will to the Father? And I think that when we're talking about radical obedience and stepping out and sharing our faith, we have to have a surrendered will to God. And it's not just a one-time event. It is an everyday thing that we have to make a choice to surrender our will so that we can fulfill his will. And I, I want to just read this passage in, in 1 Samuel uh, chapter 15. And then Ransom, I know you've got a story, a testimony about radical obedience that just took place recently. You, you just got back from Ukraine and uh, you were in the midst of everything there when the war was taking place. And we're gonna, I want you to share that testimony. But let's look at this verse in, in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22. Um, uh, Samuel said this, And Samuel said, has the, Lord, uh, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offering and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed than the fat of rants for rebellion as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is iniquity as idolatry because you have rejected the word of the Lord he has rejected you from being king wow wow that's that's heavy right there that's convicting that's convicting right there and that's convicting and the reason why it's convicting is because too much is given much is required and so oftentimes, you know, there's these prayers, Lord, more, 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 more. But when he gives the more, there is a great responsibility. And oftentimes, you know, the fear of man, like Saul had here, he had the, he had the fear of man syndrome, which prevented him from obeying the voice of God. And we're going to talk about radical obedience in the importance of obeying God. And if we're going to continue to live a life of obedience, we have to have the fear of men eradicated in our heart and our life because we have to, and, and what eradicates that is really the fear of God. And the fear of God is not like a ah punishment. It's actually more of like, I love you so much, God, that yeah. I'll do anything that you tell me to do because I love you. And I don't want to break this connection of love that we have. I don't want to do something yeah. that would break this connection. Mm -hmm. Ransom, you've got a powerful story about radical obedience. I'd love for you to share it. Yeah, well, um, as I was sharing with you before, you know, I just came back from Ukraine where uh, God had me over there for uh, longer than I wanted to be there. But I, I remembered it all started here in Vancouver with hearing the voice of the Lord and, and uh, feeling the heartbreak for what was happening in this nation. 
God gave me his heart for this nation. And through prayer and intercession, God spoke to my heart and said, Ransom, I want you to go to Europe. I want you to go into these dangerous places where other people aren't willing to go. Mm-hmm. And at first, I didn't want to do it because I was in, in my will. And it was actually through um, time with the Lord and, and surrendering my will that, that God actually gave me his faith. Yeah. put his faith inside of me to say, this can be done. I initially planned to go there and be there for two weeks. I thought it was going to be a short-term trip. God opened up so many doors for us. I ended up staying there for three whole months in this nation where uh, he opened up many doors for us to preach the gospel wow. in places all over Ukraine, all over the country, from uh, military bases to um, even in the offices of Uh, high up politicians in different places going into hospitals and to different places that that I I couldn't have gotten myself into. But because of that surrender, God blessed it and he opened up so many doors for us to preach the gospel. I'm going to I'm going to just stop you right there. Because of that surrender, God opened up all those doors. Yes. We're talking about radical obedience. And so a lot of times people in their own will are trying to open up doors, trying to see God move through their life, trying so hard, but they're not surrendering to the voice of God and they're not obeying God's voice. Right. And, but it's the obedience that opens up doors. I want you to keep going and talking about that. Yeah, he, he spoke to me before I ever even crossed the border and he said, if, if you surrender your will to me, I will, I will take you to places that you, you couldn't have uh, dreamt of stepping into. And uh, before I ever uh, left the border of Ukraine, um, God had already prepared my heart. And that's the thing is he prepares your heart ahead of time yeah. before he opens these doors. People try to pry doors open uh, out of their own will, but it's actually the opposite. It's when you let go of the very yeah. thing that you desire Yes. That God himself and his strength says, all right, you're out of the way. And let me show you what I can do. Yeah. And, and he blazed a trail for us all along the way in Ukraine. Um, so much so that, that uh, God gave us access into military bases where hundreds and hundreds of soldiers were being trained uh, to, to be ready to go sent out to the front lines of where the war was happening. And God would bring us into these places where other people wouldn't have access into. I remembered one uh, night, uh, we, were, we were on our way to this military base that God himself had given us access to, where there were 400 soldiers at one military base. Wow. And uh, we actually didn't have a translator with us. Uh, we had a whole team of English speakers uh, that didn't know Russian or Ukrainian. And we went in there and we prayed and we asked the Lord. We said, Lord, would you provide a translator for us when we make it to this military base? And in faith, we went Mm. without having a plan or anything. And that's the part of the surrender is without even knowing how this is going to happen. You trust the word of the Lord and you go and he fills in all the gaps as you take that step of faith. So we went to this military base and... Um, we asked these soldiers, we said, hey, is there anyone here that speaks English? Um, We need someone to translate. And this one uh, young 20-something-year-old young man comes up to us, and I remember his name was Sergio. And he said, "Uh, yes, I speak English. I can can help you. Uh, I can translate for you, no problem. We're like, oh, thank you, man. You know, this has really blessed us. And uh, he got to talking with us, and he said, "Uh, this is crazy that you are here because Earlier today at the base, I prayed and I said, God, use me however you want to use me here in this place. It was a simple, honest prayer that he prayed, not knowing that later that day that a team of missionaries from the other side of the world were going to come into his base. And that night, he translated for us and preached the gospel to his whole battalion of 400 soldiers. And that night, he saw hundreds of his uh, soldiers give their lives to Jesus. Wow. They raised their hands. They, we prayed together there at that base, and we handed out Bibles, and the Holy Spirit came and just changed the whole place. And um, 
it was so amazing that, that God sent this young man. Yes. And um, we left that base later that night only to find out that uh, a week later that he was sent to the front lines with, with all of those troops that we had just preached to and many of them were killed in combat. Wow. wow. Not even a week later. And, and that put the fear of the Lord in me because it made me realize that if it wasn't for my obedience, yeah. these, these men wouldn't have heard about Jesus before going to the front lines of war. That, that is just such a powerful story in a testimony of simple, radical obedience. And I, and I think for, for those that are watching right now, whether you're an individual or you're a church, you know, your, your one step of obedience has the ability to alter the course of eternity. One step of obedience. Right. And I'm reminded as well of when Hitler was in power in World War II, um, that Stephanie's grandma, who just went to be with the Lord, was, was there. And so when Hitler was in power, she fled into Hungary and um, there was a missionary as well that came and he was from America and he preached the gospel and she wow. came to one of those meetings wow. and it was there that she made a commitment to follow Jesus and was baptized in the Holy Spirit because of, because of this one man's obedience to preach the gospel. Wow. And he was moved with compassion and he, he just stepped out and he preached the gospel. And I'm, I'm inspired by this. In this message about radical obedience, yeah. I feel like the Lord is just breathing on it so much. And I want to just say right now, it's amazing what God's getting ready to do in your life as you simply obey God's word and his voice. I just want to encourage you. We're going to talk more about this, but I just feel to encourage you right now just to take a moment to say, what is God already speaking to you about? What is he? ask you to do don't delay quickly obey I tell my daughter all the time that when I ask her to do something it's very important that she obeys me fast and the reason why is if she learns to obey me and her mom very fast it sets her up to obey God's voice very fast wow. Steve you've been with me uh, quite a bit and um, we've seen God do some amazing things and just some incredible things that have taken place. I was actually just in Reading recently and I talked to Janelle and, and, and that story. I mean, I just, I think that story is just amazing. Here I am, I'm praying that morning. I am just forgiving people that need to be forgiven because the Lord teaches us to forgive. And so it's, the reality is a lot of times people think, well, everything is going to be fine and dandy once you become a Christian. And the reality is you're going to get kicked back. You're going to have people come against you. But your responsibility is to watch over your heart with all diligence and yes. to forgive right. fast. And yes. so that morning I was just forgiving some individuals and, and after I forgave, it was 7 a.m. in the morning. You remember this story? Yeah, 7 a.m. in the morning, um, the Lord gave me a street, Sonoma Street. And then you and Gerald, uh, you know, who got saved, you know, that, that story is amazing as well. You and Gerald were in the grocery store with me, and I just said, suddenly, out of the blue, oh my gosh, I remember, we got to go to Sonoma Street. I totally forgot about it because hours went by, we had meetings. And uh, Steve, from your perspective, what, what did you see God do in that moment? Well, what I love is uh, when God speaks a word, it's his invasion in somebody's life. And, and if we don't obey it, yep. it just drops to the ground. But you said we got to go to Sonoma Street, and we found it. And you began to share with Janelle. And I, I love every time you reach that God moment when they realize, wow, God knows who I am. God cares about me. Yes. And I start crying probably sooner than they start crying because I just <laughs> love it when God invades their life. But it takes that obedience. It takes that going out, takes that risk. And I just remember, I mean, it's kind of all blurry. I just remember she just was falling apart realizing because she said herself, 
at 7.30, the same time, it was 7.30, you received the word. She was crying out. It's around out, 7, 7.30. Yeah, 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 it was about seven, And she was crying out, God, I need your help today. Wow. And so wow. God put the two together. And I'm just a mess, you know, because I realized, wow, this is God right here in the scene. But you get them, and we've got about a dozen of those. I, that's why I like hanging around you, because I love to cry. I love to, I love to cry. I love to cry. I love when to I see the hot tears, When I man. see God invading somebody his life by the power of his word and they realize wow god really does love me so the rest you know is history well, we took care of some things and, and she was just blown away and she just saw how god invaded her life and she gave her life uh I, she 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 was a believer some but she just gave everything to the oh, lord yeah. oh, when yeah. she saw how much god cared for her. so i love it yeah it was a total reset and you know, you're watching right now and you may be saying, how can I hear the voice of God? How can I position myself to hear the voice of God? I want to just quickly tell you, you are already wired to hear the voice of God. Yes. The very fact that you're right. born again, if you're watching this and you've given your life to Jesus, the very fact that you're born again reveals to me that you've already heard the voice of God because the Holy Spirit revealed Jesus to you. The Holy Spirit revealed to you, your need for the Lord. So it's in your DNA to hear the voice of God. Acknowledge it. Acknowledge that you are wired to hear the voice of God. Uh, open up the Bible. Um, get a journal out. Make it a practice of reading your word of God and allowing God to speak to you. Uh, make it a practice of just saying, Lord, speak to me. What do you want to reveal to me? Another way that you can recognize the voice of God is by feeling his heart. Feeling his compassion for people. And once you feel his heart and his compassion for people, you've got to quickly obey. But we also have to recognize what has Jesus already said. And there's some commandments that God has already given us. One of those things is to be faithful, to be an ambassador, to be faithful, to preach the gospel. So I want to encourage you with that. Manny, any questions on this topic about radical obedience? I know that this is something that you love to talk about as well, but any questions that you have on this topic? I think that a question I would have, Chris, is what happens when the fear of man is stronger in your life? than the fear of God. Or let's just say the fear of stepping out or the fear of what's going to happen if I do this. So the fear of man and the fear of what's going to happen, how do you step through that? And how do you personally step out of fear and into God's love? Wow, that's a great question. I think the fear of man, you know, we see in Proverbs is a snare. And when we think about a snare, it, it puts traps on individuals. And a lot of times people don't even realize it, that they care so much about what other people think more than they think, more than they care what God thinks. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be honest. We have yeah. to be really honest and transparent. And we have to say, Lord, free me of the fear of man. I don't want the fear of man to control me. But also is that fear of failure. You know, there's a fear of failure. What if I don't get it right? What if I, what if I fail? What if, I, what if I miss out? What if I, I do this and nothing happens? And so there's a lot of fear that motivates people. And instead of allowing God's love and compassion to motivate people, they, they settle for a, a less than version of what they were created to be when they're under the influence of the fear of man. And there's a lot of people that are living under that influence. So um, what, one of the things that I learned, Maddie, is when God spoke to me years ago to put a Christian T-shirt on, um, I was terrified. I mean, that's how I started. And so hopefully that encourages you right now because that's where I started. God spoke to me to put a Christian T-shirt on, and I wrestled with him. Can you imagine me arguing with God on why I don't think it's a good idea for me to put a Christian T-shirt on? Well, the, the truth is I was afraid of what people thought about me, and God knew that. God knew exactly wow. where I was at. And so I, I just, I was honest. I said, God, I'm afraid. And he was like, that's the problem. You need my help. And, and I, I bought a Christian t-shirt. I put it on. I went into Walmart. And, um, and when I put that Christian t-shirt on, I knew someone was going to say something to me. And sure enough, five minutes being in Walmart, I saw someone that I went to school with. And, um, and they asked me about my shirt. And I knew I could say, well, it's just a shirt. 
Or I could say, I love Jesus with all my heart. and He's changed me. That's what I said. And he said, well, good for you. I didn't pray for him. Didn't give him, uh, it wasn't, there was nothing that took place. Didn't share the gospel. All I said is Jesus changed me. I love him. And he said, good for you. And he walked away. And I walked away. I was like, my gosh, I feel like I, I, something was just raised from the dead. Oh, my gosh, it was me. <laughs> I was raised from the dead. <laughs> Another layer of the fear of man just came off wow. of me. That was trying to control me. So I would say that um, we have to recognize what God has done for us. And we have to be quick to obey Maddie, whatever he tells us to do. You know, another another story is, you know, I began to hear testimonies of people stepping out years ago. And to me, it was a little bit overwhelming. This was in, it was, it was in 1999-2000. And um, people were talking about hearing God's voice and stepping out. And I thought in the back of my mind, well, that's for them. Uh, they're gifted in that area. That's not how I'm wired. I'm not gifted that way. But there was something inside of me that said, but I'm hungry for it. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's you right now as well. Maybe you're saying, I'm hungry for this. And as I prayed, I felt the Lord show me something. And um, I had a sense that it was the Lord speaking to me. And I took a step of faith. I drove to an area with some friends. I'm praying, God move, God move. And I'm trying to find the location. I don't even find it. Let alone the people that I thought that I was going to talk to. And we pull over, I'm in the passenger seat, and I start crying. And what I'm about ready to share has helped me tremendously overcome the fear of man and also the fear of failure. I said, guys, no one's here. I failed. And they said, Chris, you don't understand. You didn't fail. I said, what are you guys talking about? There's no one here. And I'm rationalizing in my mind of like, you guys are gifted. I'm not. Right. Mm-hmm. Have you ever been there before? Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're gifted and I'm not. Yeah. And, uh, and they said, no, you didn't, you didn't fail. And I want to end with this. They said, Chris, most people would have stayed in the church. They go to church every single day of the week but they never step out and share. You took a risk and God loves your heart. That day, God gave me the freedom to be able to say, okay, God, I love you and you're looking at my heart and it took the pressure off of me. And I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that as you watch this, as you went through this, simple teaching about radical obedience that your heart would be lit up on fire. No matter how small or how big it may be, obey God and watch what he'll do in your life. I pray a blessing over you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Guys, it's been an honor to be with you guys today. This has been so much fun. Bless you guys. I can't wait for the next one that we're going to have. 